Hey everybody, <clears throat> today we're going to be showing you how to cook some of our favorite to save some of our favorite cooking tutorials in an attempt to take your cooking to a whole nother level. During this hour long program, you'll see some of the best tips, tricks, and recipes that chefs all over the world have been using for centuries. We hope that this little collection of cooking tutorials will help you on your journey to become the best chef the world has ever seen. So put on your chef's hat, sharpen your knives, grab your ladles, Buckle your shoes, shave your head, lock the doors, lube up, and get ready to learn how to cook, baby. Enjoy. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to make raviolis. Raviolis is a delicious Italian meal cuisine item, but I'm going to be making them American style. What are American style meal cuisine dinner food raviolis, you might ask? Well, let me just say that they're a better, more delicious, healthier, sexier, gooier type of raviolis. To make American raviolis, you'll just need a few ingredients. Bread, peanut butter, and jelly. Ideally, you'll be using Smucker's brand premix stripe sauce, goober flavored butter jelly hybrid shelf stable lunch mix paste sauce but if you can't find that just use whatever butter and jelly you've got around but make sure it's Smucker's brand. If you don't use Smucker's, then I don't get my paycheck. Take your Smucker's brand products and stack them up high and mush them up down. Mush them together nice and hard. Mush, 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 mush. Whoops, I don't know what that was about. <laughs> Whoops, I don't know what that was about. Boil it for six minutes and serve with your favorite Smucker's brand tomato sauce and enjoy with your family or somebody else's. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to hard boil eggs. First, start by putting an egg in the microwave. Then, put an egg in the microwave. After that, put one egg in the microwave. Then put another egg in the microwave. Turn it on. Turn the microwave on. Put an egg in the microwave and turn it on. Hey everybody! Today we're going to be showing you how to cut an onion. A lot of people don't like cutting onions because it makes them cry, but there's nothing wrong with crying. Crying doesn't make you a wimp, and even if you are a wimp, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm a wimp and I'm proud of it. I see being a wimp as a virtue. I use it to confuse people. I'm super strong and buff and handsome, so when people find out that I'm... I'm super strong and buff and handsome, so when people find out that I'm a big wimp, it confuses them, and I use that confusion to my advantage. <laughs> Well, they're scratching their filthy heads and saying, I don't get it. How can you be so thick and large and meaty? How can your body be so packed with muscles? Your skin pulled so taut over your rich, luxurious musculature. Your arms and back rippling and steaming like a bison that has just forded a river in the first icy light of dawn. How can you look like that and be such a wimp? Well, they're, <laughs> well, they're asking these questions in stunned bewilderment. I'm rooting through their wallet, taking their money, and secretly dating their girlfriend. Well, hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to be a chef. The first thing you need to do to be a chef is insert coin. After you do that, you're going to want to choose a new name for yourself. Some common chef's names are Oxcar, Angle O, Jacques and Zebra. Choose one of these names for yourself and then go through the long, expensive process of legally changing your name. Go ahead, do it. I'll wait. Just kidding, I'm not going to wait for you. Do it on your own time, idiot. Time is money and I don't have much of it, if you know what I mean. That's why I'm asking for your help today. Please, God, help me me buy my products help me have more money but more importantly help me help you have less money go to www.wormtutorial.com i don't know what's for sale on there but buy it buy patreon buy it all you dumb sucker you dumb you stupid dumb dumb idiot give me your money idiot if you do you'll be a professional chef just like Lua, just like the ones you love so much on tv you're gonna be the next bobby flay the next emerald legacy like farts in here again Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to make soup. The weather's getting colder, which means it's the perfect time to make soup. Unfortunately, the recipe we're going to be showing you today is for a cold soup, so please don't make this until it's hot outside. A lot of people are scared of trying cold soups because they heard a rumor when they were a kid that eating cold soup will make you mean and ugly. Well, I've got good news for you. The rumor is true, but you're already mean and ugly, so you don't have to worry about a thing. Just make the soup and eat it, okay? Do what I say for once, for once in your life. To make this soup, you're going to need to chop up some frozen popsicle meat. I used orange flavor. You need to use orange flavor too. Once you've stripped the flesh from the bone and chopped it up nice and fine, scoop the chunks into a tall, thin mixing bowl and then add the broth, or soup juice as some people call it. I use chicken stock, or lemonade as some people call it. Now you got yourself some soup. For once. For once in your life. 
Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to make burrito. Burritos are a delicious tube shaped food with plenty of ingredients, herbs, spices and pieces inside. Boy are they great. You know what else is great? You know what else is delicious? Even deliciouser than a burrito? Smucker's brand goober. That's the best. The best food. The best paste. Mmm. Oh boy. I sure love Smucker's brand goober paste to eat for my food. It's good in a sandwich, but if you don't have bread, it's good on its own too. It's human food. Go straight to the store and get yourself some goober paste. Heat it up or slurp it down to room temp. Room temperature. Oh my god, please buy some Smucker's products. They pay, they pay for me to say this. This is my only income right now. Please buy it. They can tell how many people buy their goober. Smucker's brand goober paste sauce, peanut butter jelly jam, striped can sauce, sugar food style food. Hashtag paste, hashtag smuck, huck, hashtag food. Hashtag goober. Goob, please. <laughs> Hey everybody, today we're gonna show you how to eat beef! Ooh, I love beef! I love meat beef! There's nothing manlier than grilling up some thick beef meat and eating it and sucking the juices down your throat thick! Thick meat to go in mouth mouth! I am a big tough man I love shoveling cooked meat into my body. Fill me with your meat! I want to eat gristle all the time, rub fat on my head on the top of my head! To eat beef you've gotta cook it. Cook it outside and be tough, strong, oily man. Cover yourself in dirt and bugs and have a big bushy beard and yell at strangers. Cook the beef on fire. Burn down a forest. Kill all plants. Cook your beef on fire and eat it and then eat the coals. Be a man. Thick, strong, musky, wet, ugly, stupid, loud, angry, violent, dumb, so dumb. All day I dream about beef. I want to die. I want to be a beef and get cooked and eaten by a strong muscle man. Take my shirt off and eat my skin and fat. Hit me in the head with a club. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to drink milk. A lot of people drink milk with or for breakfast, but I like to drink it after dinner to help me go to sleep. I like it nice and warm. It helps me relax. The best way to get perfectly warmed milk is straight from the source. Suck it right from the beef bag, right from the pork pouch. Look at this hungry pig suckling away at that swollen raw breast of the much larger animal. Look at its glowing eye. I wish that were me. I wish it were somehow both the drinker and the fountain in this scenario. How incredible would it be to be able to simultaneously release the aching burden of scalding hot milk from within your body while also gulping down liter upon liter of the sweet fatty slime? I can't think of anything I'd rather do. I guess that's not true. I'd rather be asleep. I'm so tired. I haven't been sleeping well at all lately. It's probably because I haven't had access to fresh hot milk. We had to kill our last cow two weeks ago. Times are tough. We didn't have enough feed for the cow and it was getting skinnier and looking hungrier every day. It finally reached the point where it looked me in the eye and licked its lips when I entered the barn one morning. It was either the cow or me. One of us was going to eat each other right then and there. Well, I'll spare you the incredibly wet and slippery details and just say that I haven't had a glass of fresh milk in a couple weeks. My hands are covered in calluses from having to dig another cow-sized grave. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to peel an apple. It's apple season where I live, which is next to an apple yard, apple farm, I don't know what it's called, but it's a big long place that's covered in apple bushes and it's super noisy right now because there are a bunch of people all over picking and chewing the apples. I can hardly sleep, I'm angry all the time, I get in fights almost every day. Uh, apples are a kind of fruit that doesn't taste very good, but they can taste a little better if you know what to do. You need to peel them and get rid of the disgusting innards. The inside of the apple is the worst part, and I'm not just talking about the core and seeds. That part is bad, but the apple meat around the core is nearly inedible. Peeling the apple allows you to harvest the precious outer roughage and discard the cumbersome inner pulp. Get rid of that pulp, toss it out, chow down on that sweet flavorful peel. To peel the peel off, just scrape the apple surface with a knife or even a sharp fork, or even if you don't have those things, you can use your fingernails. Just grow your fingernails out really long, it'll take a few weeks or months, and then peel your apple with your scratchy old fingertips. That should do the trick. Well, hey, everybody. Today we're going to be showing you how to make latkes. Latkes are made out of potatoes, but for some reason this recipe starts with apples and doesn't really show you what to do with them later, so I guess just use your imagination for that. Pretend that you do something with the apples after dicing them and putting them in a coffee urn or whatever that thing is. Is it a rice cooker? Anyway, let's get down to business. For realsies this time. Grate some big old potatoes with a grating thing and then grate what I assume is a hard-boiled goose egg. Collect the egg and potato slivers in a bowl and then squeeze 
squeeze the precious juice into another bowl. This juice will be the sauce. Don't drink it yet. Save it. Dump your burlap sack of potato and egg chunks into a filthy bowl and add some matzah and green things, probably some powders, whatever powders you got, I don't care. I'm not the one that has to eat your garbage cooking. I'm not the one that needs to watch a tutorial to learn how to make latkes. I already know how. I'm a good cook. I'm a good boy. You're the one. You're the one who needs help. You're the one who's bad. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to make corn dogs. I have a love-hate relationship with corn dogs because I love the corn part, but I hate the dog part. I try to stay away from phallic foods with few exceptions, and there's nary a food more phallic than the middle part of a corn dog. I can't remember what that part's called right now, it's called something. I don't like the middle part, that's what I'm trying to say. I just like the corn. I eat corn dogs like they're corn cobs, carefully nibbling away at the sweet, tender bread flesh of the dog while leaving the gross interior meat cob untouched. I don't even want it to touch my lips. Speaking of touching lips, I once knew a guy, I know a guy who used to eat corn dogs every day. He loved them. Still does, I reckon. I bet that old cowpoke would still hog down a dog right bushel of them corn dogs if he had a mind to. He might not eat them as much as he used to, but I can see it in his eye when somebody mentions corn dogs. The Bloodlust is still within him. He still yearns for them. He's a hog for the dogs. Uh, whoops, I forgot I was supposed to be telling you how to corn these dogs. To make corn dogs, stab a meat tube with a stick and cover it in goop and boil it in the toilet. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to open a coconut even though there's no reason to do so. If anything, we should be showing you how to close coconuts that are already open to keep the disgusting juice and meat from ever touching your lips. What a gross food. What a terrible flavor. I can't believe that people eat this on purpose. I can't believe that it's legal to include coconut and candy. What a horrible prank to play on unsuspecting children who are just looking for a sweet treat. Unbelievable. I hate coconuts and all fruit, in fact. I hate bananas. I hate pears. I hate apples. I hate berries, oranges, that's all fruit. I guess it's not really fair for me to say that I hate all of those things. I've actually never tasted most of them. I've eaten coconut and pears and they were terrible, but I've never had any of the other stuff. I've seen pictures of them though and that's enough for me to know that they are bad. No food should be that brightly colored. No food should come from a tree or bush. That's why I only eat bread, crackers, dough, batter, breadcrumbs, sauces, and donuts. I'm healthier than you and I look forward to every meal. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to zest a lemon. Zesting is a great skill to have for several reasons, the most important of which is the term itself. Listen to this. Zesting. Isn't that a great word? It's a real word too. Not like some of those fake words like garlic or tong or fig. This one's real and once you master the zesting technique, you'll finally have a reason to use the word in public and in private. To zest a lemon, you'll need the tiniest lemons you've ever seen in your whole life, along with the tiniest rasp you've ever seen in your whole life. If you don't have a rasp, make your own out of an old coffee can or something. Just poke some holes in the metal with a nail so that the terribly sharp metal burrs are sticking out all over the place. Rub the lemon across those delicate delicate, razor-sharp metal twists, and you'll be zesting. You'll be a professional zester, just like they had in the olden days. You see, the king would hire a royal court zester to prance around and juggle and do flips or something. They wore cool hats and had bells on their shoes, and if it were up to me, kings would still be around and I would be a professional court zester. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to make compound butter. Compound butter is butter that has stuff in it. To make compound butter, just take some butter and put some other stuff in it. You can put anything in it really. Leaves, bits, chunks, particles, slivers, droplets, whatever. It's all good. It's all delicious. I had compound butter for dinner last night and it was great. I had a log of it as a main course. It was topped with melted compound butter and I washed the whole thing down with even more melted compound butter. Yeah, I'm in the hospital today because of it, but it was delicious. Who cares? of eating nothing but compound butter for the last six weeks has left me weak and sickly. My bones are beginning to curve and bend and my skin is semi-translucent. But the flavor, oh, the incredible, rich, succulent flavor of compound butter, it just can't be matched. They say that the best things in life are free, but they're wrong. The best things in life are meals in which every dish and ingredient is some kind of compound butter. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to make fruit salad. Fruit salad is one of the easiest salads to make. All you need is a fruit, a dock, and a shoe. Combine these three ingredients in a way that makes sense to you and there you have it. Delicious fruit salad that the entire family can enjoy. Speaking of the entire family, I wish I had a family to spend time with. It's been so long since I've seen them or spoken to them. I can't even remember what they're like. I bet they were mean to me. Everybody's mean to me. Everybody who's ever been a part of my life has left me or tricked me or tripped me or pushed me in the mud. <sighs> Sorry, I, I don't mean to get all sentimental. I 
guess it's just this time of year. I always seem to feel wistful and sad around this time. What with all the holidays and roasted sweet potatoes and hams. Hams make me think of all the things that have gone wrong in my life. I wish I was a ham. Things would be so much simpler. I could just run around in the ham fields eating slop. I do that now, but if I were a ham, it'd be more appropriate. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to make pumpkin pie. A lot of people call pumpkin pie, pumpkin pie, but that's not what it's called. It's actually not even called pumpkin pie. In the honest truth, it's called pumpkin pie, because it's the king of all pies. It rules its kingdom, its pump kingdom, with an iron fist, but it's stern yet fair. It cares for those in its kingdom. That's why once a year, at the end of November, it allows its loyal subjects to take a bite of its delicious wet body. As the people of the kingdom line upside the castle's portcullis, the pumpkin pie removes his golden robe and steps into the oven, which has been preheated to a blistering 425 degrees Fahrenheit. The king waits in his sacred oven for 15 minutes before his servants dutifully turn down the temperature to 350 degrees. He stays in there, napping peacefully for another 45 minutes before cooling his sweet, edible flesh on a wire rack for at least two hours. The people of his kingdom come in one by one and take a nibble from his delicious corpse. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to peel an orange. As we all know, I've never tasted an orange, but I sure have peeled a whole lot of them. It was my job at one point. I worked aboard a small sailing vessel and it was my sole purpose to peel mountains of oranges every day for the captain, crew, and passengers. It was a difficult job, but not unenjoyable. Thinking back on those two years of my life makes my hands ache, but I find myself smiling. Sure, much of the time while under the captain's employ was unhappy and difficult, but I can look back on it fondly because it was when I was peeling oranges oranges at sea that I met her. She was a true beauty the likes of which I had never seen before. She was graceful and her voice was the sound of poured honey, sweet and quiet, intense and curative. What a uniquely special woman she was. Our time together was brief but intense. She was sailing to the Faroe Islands from Denmark. Her name was Anna. She was the first and only woman I have ever Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to harvest grapes. Grapes are so delicious and sweet. You know what I like to do after I've harvested a bucket full of grapes? I like to mix them with black olives. The grapes and the olives kind of look the same, and you can just dunk your hand into your bucket of mixed treasures and pull out a handful and toss it down your throat all at once. It's the ultimate snack. It's sweet and it's salty, and the pits in both the grapes and olives are delicious and woody and tannic. To harvest grapes, you'll need to know where some grape trees are. Grape bushes. I don't know what they are. They kind of look like trees, but they're not as big as trees. Grape bush? That sounds right, but I don't want to call it a grape bush because that reminds me of George H.W. Bush, and when I think about him, it reminds me of the time he puked on a guy on purpose as a prank. I know he thought it was funny, and a lot of people thought it was funny, but as a person who's been puked on several times, I can tell you that it's not funny. <laughs> it hurts if it gets in your eyes. It stings. And if it gets in your mouth, you have to go to the hospital. Please don't puke on people. It's just mean. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to poach an egg. Poaching an, e poaching an egg is probably the simplest and most sensual way to prepare an egg other than deviling it. Everybody knows that there's nobody more sensual than the devil. He's so slippery and sleek. He has so many abs. And he's said to be quite the generous lover. I wouldn't know though. I've never met the devil and I've never made love. I only make eggs and today we're going to be showing you how to poach them. Start by getting an egg and poaching it. Now you're done. Now you can eat it if you want or bag it up and save it for later or buy Box it up and give it to a friend or relative as a gift. Poached eggs make great gifts for any occasion. Birthdays, Christmases, Halloweens, graduations, conjugal visits, anniversaries, weddings, housewarmings, egg parties. I used to go to egg parties all the time. Each person would bring their own egg dish and trade with somebody else and give tasting notes. It was really fun and really weird, but I didn't have a choice. The teacher would fail us if we didn't participate and there was no way I was going to repeat grade number four again. Twice is enough. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to peel a carrot. I enjoy peeling carrots, I find it meditative. It's so nice to be able to come home after a long day of work and sit in my recliner and peel a bushel of carrots. <laughs> and I don't just peel the skins, I'm not a baby, I do the whole thing. I peel and peel until there's only the tiniest nub left, and then I toss that carrot nub into the fire along with the peelings. Nothing relaxes me nearly as much as peeling carrots. Watching that tiny blade slice through the carrot's delicate flesh, watching the skin peel away from the remaining meat. My hands covered in sticky sweet carrot juices. Excuse my French, but it's a hoot. That's what it is. To peel a carrot, just grab yourself a carrot and a peeler or something to peel with, like a knife or a razor blade. You can even 
You can even use a normal safety razor. You know, the kind you use to shave your back and head? I've done that plenty of times and it works just fine. Plus, when you go to shave your wet body with it later, you end up smelling a little bit like carrot, and there's nothing wrong with that. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to make muffins. Mmm, muffins. What a treat. What a delight. They're like little cakes. And you know what little cakes remind me of? They remind me of this old song that my grandpapa used to sing cakes. to me when I was a child. Give me a slice of little cakes. Onto my back. I used to love it when Grandpapa would come into my room Forgive in the middle God, of the night, smelling God, of vinegar today, and eggs, and wake me up to sing me his song. Sing Those were some of the best nights of my life. Oh, how I miss you, Grandpapa. I oh, how I wish ye were still with us today. How I would treasure your songs and tales of adventure. How I would cherish your company. Twas mine most favorite, truth be told. I loved you more than Papa or Mama. Ye wast thou apple of mine eye. I oft reminisce of our fun times. I miss ye and find find myself wondering what thou art doth art do. Hast the ye enough bread to eat? I, ye hence whence nay wast, doth art yonder twasn't he. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to cook cabbage. Cabbage is a great food made out of leaves in the ground. It's cheap or it's free if you know where some is growing. Just go there under the cover of darkness in the still of night and grab yourself a bushel of leaves. Take your leaves home or wherever you've stashed your cooking cauldron and boil some brackish water or mare's milk. Dump the leaves into your hot liquid and stir them about using a stiffened lizard's tail or a freshly cut twig. You'll know that the cabbage is done and ready to be eaten when it smells like farts and your mouth is watering so much that your stomach is starting to hurt from swallowing such great quantities of your own saliva. I never understood that. Why does drinking spit make you sick? Why can't you just stay permanently hydrated by recycling your drool? It would be so easy. Humans would be so much better if they didn't have to rely on outside sources of water. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to make breakfast. They say breakfast is the most important meal of the day, and they're right, because for me it's usually the only meal of the day, if you catch my drift. There are many breakfast foods available today, and the choices can sometimes feel overwhelming. Well, let me get rid of your stress and anxiety by teaching you how to make the best breakfast there is. If you ask me, there is only one food suitable for breakfast, and that is the delectable packaged treat known as Pop Rocks. I bet you thought I was going to say Smucker's Goober, didn't you? Well, you don't know everything. Everything, so stop being so full of yourself for once, for once in your life. Anyway, Pop Rocks are delicious and extremely good for your bones and blood. Really good for your blood, in fact. They're super easy to prepare, too. Just rip open a sachet and dump those sweet stones down your gullet. Oh, there's a gnome go. Oh, I like the watermelon flavor. Tastes as good as the kind you get at a restaurant. I love breakfast. I love foods that explode. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to make butter. Oh baby, I love butter and it's so easy to make. To make butter, just go buy some butter, let it melt by keeping it in your pocket or really just anywhere on your body. Under your armpit works fine if you're lying down and behind your neck works fine if you're lying down. Just melt it with your own body warmth. That's an important step. After it's melted, you can collect the drippy gold and put it into whatever container you'd like. This is where you really get to be creative. You get to use your imagination and creativity like the stupid kindergarten that you are. You can put your melted butter in a plastic bag or in a plastic egg or in a plastic tub. I don't care. It's your life. Don't make me live it for you. I've already got my own horrible life to live. One is enough, thank you very much. Anyway, now that you've got your melted butter in a container of your choosing, just put it someplace cold so it rehardenifies into butter. Now you've made your own butter. You're really, now you're really a good butter boy. Good work. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to make ham salad. Ham salad is one of my most favoritest of dishes. It's a great birthday treat and it's somebody's birthday almost every day, so feel free to whip up a tub of this slop any old time you feel like it. <laughs> ham salad is one of nature's most nutritious salads because it contains nature's most perfect meat, hog meat. Hog flesh is rich in vitamins and minerals and gristles that your body needs to keep growing and growing and sweating and sweating and sweating. To make ham salad, Get yourself a big heavy wad of pig and cut it up real small like paper thin if you've got the skill to do it. It's taken me years of practice and disfiguring accidents to learn how to use the knife the way I do, but as you can see, the results were worth the trouble. Once you've got your hog all thinned out, mix up several bushels of corn and of course some paste. You can use any old paste you like, but I highly recommend Smucker's Brain Goober Paste. Smucker's Brain Goober, an edible paste that the whole family will enjoy.
Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to can tomatoes. Tomatoes are the world's most succulent fruit and or vegetable. I don't know which it is because I treat it like a vegetable, but a guy with a book told me that it's a fruit. But whatever it is, it's delicious and delicate and red. Tomatoes are only good for about two hours after you dig them out of the earth, so that's why almost all of them live in cans. If you trap a tomato in a can, it won't turn rotten nearly as fast. I don't know why, I think it's something about the darkness of the interior of its can-based prison cell. It makes the tomato feel like it's back under the dirt, so it keeps growing instead of rotting. I think that's why. No, you know what? No more guessing. If I feel like something's right, then it's right. New year, new me. More confidence, more smart brain. Confidence is so important nowadays, everybody's always making fun of each other, or at least they're always making fun of me and telling me I'm stupid and wet and dumb. But starting today, I'm not gonna pay any attention to them. I'm gonna start feeling smart and dry and cool. That's who I am. That's what I'll be. To can a tomato, put it in a can and understand that I'm smart, not stupid anymore. Hey everybody, today we're going to show you how to make dessert. A lot of people love dessert, but not me. I hate it because I don't like normal sweet foods like ice cream or candy or cereal or crab meat or popsicles. That's why I have to make my own special dessert items if I want a tasty treat after a difficult dinner of plant roughage and animal bones. When I want dessert, there's only one thing that'll satisfy my craving. Red pickles. To make red pickles, take some normal pickles that humans eat and add sweet red powder to them. Oh baby, my mouth is already watering. I'm soaked over here. My taste buds are tingling and so is my left arm. I love those sweet red salty boys so much. If you haven't tried them before, I highly recommend it. Like I said, put the red in the pickle jar and wiggle it around until it's all mixed up and you don't know what to do. Then just pop the top and take a sip. Savor the flavor. What a delight. It's the perfect dessert. It's the only dessert if you ask me. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to make yogurt. Yogurt is a type of stretching exercise where you go into a room with a bunch of other people wearing spandex and you sit or stand on a thin mat and contort your body into weird shapes and breathe a lot, I think. I've never made yogurt because people usually don't let me into their yogurt studios and if they do, they soon ask me to leave after getting a whiff of my pungent stench. But who cares about yogurt? Not me. I don't need to make yogurt to stay healthy and flexible. I don't even want a membership to your stupid yogurt studio anyway. I hate the yogurt instructor's voice and I hate the way that everybody looks at me and judges me for using a yogurt mat that I made from carpet samples I found behind a carpet store. Yeah, I know my yogurt mat is wet. I sleep on it and sometimes I pee in my sleep. So what? Who cares? Big whoop whoop whoop! Wicked clowns for life! I see pee, baby! Juggalo love to all my fellow hatchet men and hatchet women! I see you and I respect you and I salute you! You're all my family! I see pee means family! Fago, tattoos, face paint, whatever! Just be yourself and join the party! Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to make a sandwich. And there's only one way to make a sandwich if you ask me, and that's with Smucker's brand goober. Good lord, it's tasty. I love Smucker's... <coughs> 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 Am I dying? Am I already dying? Oh god, there isn't supposed to be blood when you cough, only when you poop. <laughs> What's happening to me? Am I mutating? Do I have an old cowboy's disease? Jesus, heaven and god, Jesus, help me, please. I don't want to die. I don't know how to die. I never learned how to die. Please, oh god. Please, I beg of thee, oh death. Please consider my age. Please don't take me at this stage. My wealth is all at your command. You'll move your icy hands. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to make beans. You know what they say about beans, right? You know that old rhyme, don't you? <coughs> beans, beans, the musical fruit. I pledge my life and to you salute. You are my king, my god today. With bean in hand I kneel and pray. O oh, humble bean, how sweet you are. I spread your gospel both near and far. Upon my grave I hope you'll plant some beans for me because I can't. These beans I'll wear as shirt and pant, and with these beans I'll sweetly chant. Beans, beans, the musical fruit. The more you eat, the more you toot. The more you toot, the better you feel. So let us eat beans with every meal. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to cook for one. If you're like me, you live alone and hardly ever see or speak to other living humans. Because of that, I generally prepare meals for just one person, because I equal one person. Some people find it challenging to only cook enough food for one mouth and one stomach, but with a few simple tools, you can be sure that you'll never cook too much for yourself, because remember, you're all alone and nobody wants to eat with you, and God, I am so lonely. I am so, so lonely all the time. <sighs> 
to cook for one. You just need an electric kettle or chicken boiler as they're called around these parts. You'll also need a chicken and some sort of mashed paste. Smucker's brand Goober works great for this. Smear the Goober all over your extremely raw chicken and then slop it into the chicken boiler for some number of minutes. Mmm, looks good. Using a chicken boiler ensures that you won't cook too many chicken pieces because of the very limited space within its walls. One electric kettle's worth of chicken is the perfect amount for somebody as lonely as me. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to make jelly beans. I've never had jelly beans before, but I bet they're good. How could they not be? They're little, they're little beans filled with one half of what makes Smucker's Brand Goober so delicious. Jelly. I'm talking about jelly. That's what they're filled with. Now, you might be asking yourself, how do they fill these tiny little beans with such delicious fruit jelly? Well, that's a fair question, and if you'd shut up for a second, I'd show you. But no, you never shut up. All you do is yap and squawk like a little wet pig in a piggery. That's what you are. You're a hungry little hog screaming for mother to come feed you her milk. Typical. To make jelly beans, just go to the lizard store and take a seat next to the fattest slimy boy. Sit still and make as little noise as possible. The lizard can't produce beans if you intimidate it. Just sit there and let the lizard handle the rest. If you're lucky, you won't have to be there for more than a few days before the lizard pushes out a wet pile of jellied beans for you to have and enjoy for the rest of your life. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to decorate a birthday cake. Happy birthday! Now it's time to decorate your cake. Nobody else is going to do it for you because nobody is coming over to celebrate your birthday with you. They wouldn't dare. They don't want to be around you and even if they did, they wouldn't risk it. What if everybody in class found out that they were hanging out with you? They'd be a laughing stock. They'd be chastised and brutalized and shunned. You understand how that feels. You wouldn't want anybody else to feel so alone and isolated and hated as you do. So you don't even bother inviting people over for your birthday anymore. In fact, you don't even really celebrate. You just make yourself a subpar cake and decorate it yourself, alone, in the dark. Alone. Completely alone. To decorate a birthday cake, spread some goo on it and make it into a design. Who cares? Why do I even bother doing this every year? I don't even like cake. I used to think it would cheer me up, but it doesn't. Nothing does. I hate this. I hate birthdays. I hate myself. I hate calendars. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to peel a banana. First, hold three bananas in your little hands and- <coughs> Oh god, a bug just flew in my mouth. Uh, it's a bee and it's still alive, so I have to stop now. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to make tortilla. Tortilla are as good for food and to eat it for food. I eat it all the time just by itself because that is the only food of which I have and in the abundance of, of it. Tortilla. Good for eat and to make of food too. To make tortilla, mix some powder as cup in a bowl of powders and colored powder. Different type and style of powdering is fine, be sure to. Next, stir handily with top of best stirring motion. Only stop to make sure that it is. Be certain in everything. Never too many. Never for too few. A simple trick of remembrance is as follow. Please extra good powder for today and for the times you're in need of uh, Now time for ball. Stir in with hand toes gentle ball shape. Unlike earth this shape must be round and plump. Small bird, tender turkey, windless day, hot stick, golden metal and bottom of river. Press firmly with grandpapa's device. Smush down. Tortilla. Cook tortilla on with heat necessary timing. Eat for food and survive. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to boil milk. Now, you're probably asking yourself, why would I ever want to boil milk? I like the milk ice cold, or nice and warm right straight from the teat. Well, let me answer your question with a question of my own. What if you're really cold, and it's cold outside, and your cow recently died because you killed it, because you were hungry, and it was being mean to you, but you want a nice warm milk, but you can't get it straight from the cow's milk sack, because, like I said earlier, the cow has stopped being alive, and you can't get milk from a dead cow, you just can't. What about that situation? situation, huh? There's only one solution to that problem, and it's to boil milk. To boil milk, just put it in a big twisting pot and heat it up with warmth and heat. Keep twisting and warming until the milk steam is so thick that you can barely see your hand in front of your face. That's when you know that the milk is boiling, when you can no longer see. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to hard boil an egg. Have you ever tried to boil something but you messed it up because you boiled it too much and it died? Well don't worry because that's not going to happen today because this isn't a tutorial about bathing toads. I've made too many fatal errors to try to make that tutorial anymore. This is a tutorial about eggs and how to hard boil them. To hard boil an egg, put the egg in a saucepan and add fluid or liquid to it. It can be clear or opaque, watery or viscous. The liquid can be purchased from a grocer or it can be produced by your own body. The possibilities are limitless, but if you want to hard boil an 
egg like a real thick, handsome, wet stud like me, you'll boil that sweet little baby in a bath of your own golden grease. That's right. Boil it in pee. In urine. Boil it up until it's good and hard, and then take it out and dump it on a plate. Mmm. Doesn't that look good? Doesn't that look hard-boiled? Aren't you hungry? Is baby hungry wungy Is it feeding time for baby? Wah, wah. Baby needs its egg, or baby is gonna cry. Baby's gonna have egg diarrhea from eating too many egg, but baby can't help itself. Baby loves hard egg. Baby loves it. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to scramble an egg. Scrambling an egg is one of the best ways to prepare an egg, if you ask me. I love all of the wiggling that's required. It's possibly the most wiggle-heavy recipe that I know of, other than making a nice big pot of wiggle toni, which is a type of Italian pasta that I truly love. Wiggle toni was invented in 1492 by an Italian gentleman named Tony, which is short for Anthony, which is short for Susan B. Anthony. Wiggle toni is a delicious noodle food which is beloved all over the world by young and and old and middle-aged people. It can be served with or without sauce. I prefer it without sauce, and a lot of the time I don't even bother cooking my Wiggle Tony. It's so good raw, the tubes are so hard and dry, they shatter like beige glass in your mouth when you crunch down, and if you're lucky, you can find undigested Wiggle Tony shards in your bowel movements the day after you eat them. It's fun. It's like an Easter egg hunt. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to drink an egg. I love drinking eggs. I'm getting thirsty just thinking about it. I'm getting wet just thinking about it. To drink eggs, you'll need to prepare them. You can't just crack them open and pour the slime into your body like some sort of half-crazed muscle man bodybuilder. That's not who you are. You're a good person, so you drink eggs the way I tell you to. First, cook them so the innards turn hardened. You want hardened innards. Once they're hardened, scoop out the center spheres, or yolks as they're sometimes called. We're only drinking drinking the egg yolks today. You'll save the shells and whites for another beverage, an adult beverage. Anyway, take the rock-hard yolks and blend them with milk. I'm using sow's milk because it's the thickest and most sour that I know of, and my sow refuses to produce any other kind. <laughs> get it? Do you get it? It's a pig. Of course it can only produce sow's milk. It's pig's milk, sow's milk. Do you get it? Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to fry an egg. I don't know how to fry an egg, okay? I've never done it before and I don't plan on doing it. There are just some things that I'm not interested in learning about or teaching and frying eggs is one of them. <sighs> I'm not really in the mood to make a tutorial about anything, really. I'm just feeling kind of down today. I've been feeling down for the last few years, but today is a little worse, I guess. I don't know why. Nothing extra bad happened to me or anything. Sure, I didn't sleep very well last night because I pooped the bed and the stink woke me up, so I spent a few hours scrubbing the turds out of my cot. And when I finally got back to sleep again, I was woken up yet again by the smell of my own stink because I pooped the bed once more. Twice. Twice in one night. That's a lot. Even for me. So I'm not really in the mood to do much today. I'm tired and I stink and everything just feels off. It's just one of those days that isn't going right, you know? And you know how it is. You poop the bed too, don't you? Please tell me that I'm not the only one who does it at this age. Please tell me that I'm not alone in this, please. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to season food. Food is pretty good, but it's even better with seasoning. To season food, you'll need seasonings. The main ones, the big two, are salt and pepper. They're white and black and they go great on just about anything. Salt makes food wetter or drier and pepper makes food taste tinglier. What a great combination. There are other spices too, but I don't know about them and I'm not a millionaire, so two is enough for me, okay? Two's plenty. Zero's plenty if you're as hungry as I am. Anyway, spices, huh? What a treat. What a delight. Once you've got your hands on a few salts and a couple of peps, just grind them into a nice powder and sprinkle them all over the top of your favorite food. Sprinkle liberally. I'm not talking about a dash or a pinch. You shouldn't be able to see your food for all the seasoning that you have bestowed upon it. Your food should look and feel like sand, but taste like heaven. Trust me, I eat salt all the time. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to melt butter. Melting butter is pretty easy as long as you've got two special ingredients, butter and heat. If you don't have one of those ingredients, it'll be difficult. If you don't have either of those ingredients, it'll be nearly impossible. Let's begin, shall we? Is that okay with you? Do I have your permission to continue with my tutorial, oh great one? Sire, my liege, do I have your blessing? Will it please you if I go on? If you can't tell, I'm trying to be sarcastic. I don't care if I have your permission to continue. I don't care if you want to learn how to melt butter. I'm just trying to have a good time over here. I don't need your approval for that. I'm just trying to rock out and heat up some butter for breakfast. Is that a crime? Don't care. If it's a crime, lock me up and throw away the key. If it isn't a crime, quit bugging me so I can eat my butter soup in peace, you monster. Hey, everybody. 
<clears throat> Today we're going to be teaching you how to stir. Stirring is essential if you want to become a world-class chef like me. You need to know the proper stirring techniques if you want to make five-star cuisine in the comfort of your own home or even from the discomfort of somebody else's. To stir, put ingredients inside of a tub or bucket and then use a stick to move them around. You can use your hand, but a lot of times the ingredients will be warm or hot and it might hurt your little thingy wingies to dip them in there. I like to use a wooden stick, but some people use plastic or metal sticks. Today I'm stirring a thin slurry of a gruel. I usually like to make a thicker gruel for myself, but I've only got a single packet of gruel powder left for the week, so I'm having to add a lot less than I normally would. It's fine though, as long as it's hot and slimy, it's good enough for this boy. Mmm, smells good. I can't wait to suck down this pot of boiling hot gruel slurry. I can't wait to do it again tomorrow too. I'm already getting hungry just thinking about tomorrow's wet breakfast. You know what they say, breakfast is the only meal of the day. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to make applesauce. Applesauce is a gross baby's food made out of brown wet apples like these. You can usually find these apples in the refrigerator. Put the slimy apple chunks in a little bucket to rest and relax. You'll also need a small saucepan and a stove or warm area to cook the slimy boys. Plop them into the saucepan and warm them considerably. You can also add liquid to try to wash away some of the slime, but good luck. The longer you cook the apples, the more slime they release, but worry not. That's what makes this a sauce rather than a paste. Speaking of paste, this video is brought to you by Smucker's Bray and Goober Paste, the finest culinary paste there is. Smucker's Goober is made from only the finest ingredients and it tastes so sweet. Smucker's Bray and Goober Jelly Sauce Peanut Butter Butter Flavored Paste Style Food Substitute is available on your grocery shelves today. Anyway, back to the applesauce. When it's finished, it should look like this. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to make french fry. French fry is a type of potato cooking method developed in France by a young woman in 1425. The young woman who invented the French style of frying potatoes was very smart and cool. I mean, she invented french fries after all. She was small and fast and great at cooking. You'll never be able to make french fries as well as she did, but you can make a worse variety that best suits the kind of person you are. A not very good one, especially when compared to the creator of the humble fry. To make french fries, cut up potatoes and cover them in sand and put them in the old roasting machine. I don't know why they call them fries when they're not fried, but I'm not going to argue with tradition. I'm not going to do anything. Not today, at least. It's Friday and my back hurts and my teeth hurt. I know why my back hurts, but I don't know why my teeth hurt. I already brushed them this week. I haven't been eating candies, just french fries, and french fries are good for your teeth. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to make whipped cream. Mmm, doesn't that look delicious? It's so gray. Personally, I love it when whipped cream is gray. It tastes better that way because it looks better that way. That's how things work. The better something looks, the more delicious it is. That's why I always make whipped cream using viscous slime juice. Oh god. God, my mouth is watering. My mouth is filling up with water just looking at that briny bean fluid. Now, at this point you might be saying, I thought whipped cream was made from cream that's been whipped. And to that I say, leave me alone. Not everybody has their own cow or goat or other milk producing animal. Some of us had to eat them this past winter because we had a poor harvest and our stores of grain did not last us as long as we thought, even though we were rationing them and only eating a handful of uncooked wheat each day. So yeah, my cow is dead and now I use beef beans for my creams. It's just like the old saying, bean work makes the cream work. Somebody should put that on a shirt and sell it at the mall. Spencer's Gifts or Hot Topic would probably sell it. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to make sauce. Sauce is a delicious flavoring liquid that makes any food taste better. I love sauce a lot. It's often my favorite part of the dish. It's the most flavorful, fragrant, and beautiful component of any meal. To make sauce, you generally just have to turn stuff into a liquid, or at least make it more liquidy than it was before. Not all sauces are pure liquid. Some have chunks, some have pieces, some have bits, and some have speckles. Remember that. Chunks, pieces, bits, and speckles. I'm asking you to remember that because those were the names of some birds I saw once. They weren't pets, I just called them that for fun. They were four screaming bald eagles and they were fighting over a lamb carcass. I tried to chase them off so I could have something to eat for dinner myself, but they stood their ground. I spent over two hours trying to get them to leave, but when they finally did, there were only bones left. Needless to say, I had boiled lamb bones for dinner, but it wasn't that bad because I topped it with a nice sauce. 
Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to make gravy. Gravy is so good and weird, it's a type of sauce that can look very different depending on who's making it. Sometimes it looks like brown mud, sometimes it looks like wet cement, sometimes it looks like hog's milk, sometimes it looks like there are bits of endometrial lining floating in it, sometimes it's thin and watery, sometimes it's thick and creamy. However it looks and however it's prepared, I love it. Savory and sweet succulent mouth-watering. Gravy is for me, my number one baby for gravy. To make gravy, boil some animals until they look thick and broken. Then add seasonings, bone powders, elixirs, potions, and talismans. Keep boiling and boiling until your kitchen is filled with the wretched stink of butchered beasts. It should smell like a slaughterhouse in there. Turn your home into a slaughterhouse. Remove your furniture. There are going to be a lot of thrashing animals in there. You need them to make gravy. Boil their fat, scoop out their marrow. Have a feast. Merry Christmas. Hola a todos. Hoy te mostraremos como hacer salsa. La salsa es genial. Me gusta mucho. Me gusta comerlo. Sumergirlo. Cocinarlo. Y incluso beberlo a veces. No ha nada como un vaso alto de salsa para comenzar el día. Vigoru <laughs> Vigoriza los sentidos. Expand el cerebro y amplia tus ponderes. Te hace más sensible a la tierra, a las ancestros, a las personas y a las verduras. Afortunadamente no necesitas comprar salsa. Puedes hacer el tuyo para hacer salsa. Solo mezcla algunas cosas. Usual Mente os frutas y verduras, pero, re pero realmente puedes usar cualquier tipo de cosas que te guste comer. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to cut a tomato. Tomatoes are one of my favorite foods. I just love foods that are filled with wet seeds. I can't get enough. I really like when the seeds stick, get stuck in my teeth, and I get to find them later. Sometimes hours after I've eaten. It's like a little bonus surprise bite. It's like a gift from heaven. A gift from God. That's why I like raspberries and blackberries and hot dogs. I bet you didn't know that hot dogs are filled with seeds, did you? It's okay if you didn't. A lot of people don't know that. It's not like hot dogs are a fruit or a plant or whatever, they're a meat tube. A tube that's filled with meat and seasonings, but they're also filled with seeds. You see, hot dogs are made from whatever gets swept up off the killing floor at the slaughterhouse, and it's very common for slaughterhouse workers to scatter leaves and seeds on the floor during the workday because it gets so slick with blood. The seeds and leaves help soak up some of the hot dog blood and provide traction. The seeds get swept up with the meat chunks and blood, and then you eat it in a hot dog. Today we're going to be showing you how to pull pork. To pull pork, you just need to get yourself some pork, which is just a fancy way of saying pig meat, and cook it up nice and then ruin it. You see, when you cook a hog's muscle, it should come out as a nice big brown blob. It should be one single piece, I mean. The sign of a nicely cooked sow is that it's only one piece. That's how you know. That's how you know it's good. So you've cooked up your swine flesh, and it's nice and edible. You're probably looking at it and thinking, Oh baby, sweet baby, I want to bite right into this hunk of hog right now. Well, you can't just yet. You've got to ruin it if you want to make pulled pork, and that's what we're doing today. Mop up the saliva that's inevitably drooled out of your gaping maw, and then put your pig piece on a plate and mess it all up by yanking it and stretching it and twisting it apart. I know that that doesn't make any sense. You've got yourself a perfectly good swine shank, and now I'm telling you to twist it apart? That's right, I am, because if I can't have anything nice, then neither can you. Enjoy your ruined meat. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to make a smoothie. Smoothies can be made out of any old thing, any old blendables. If you think about it, every food is blendable. You either blend it before you eat it, or your body blends it for you once it's inside of you. If you think about it even more, your poop is a kind of a smoothie. Think about it. Think about it, please. You take some food, you put it in a thing, the thing being your body, and then it gets all blended up and mashed together until it's a rich, creamy slurry. A smoothie, some might say. Sure, it might take a bit longer than using a normal blender, but not everybody has a normal blender. Your body is a free blender and it's always with you, ready to blend and provide you with nutritious, fragrant smoothies that the entire family can enjoy. What I'm really trying to say here is that eating your own poop is the same thing as eating a smoothie, except one of them costs money and the other one is illegal. 
Hey everybody, today <coughs> today we're going to be showing you how to soak beans. You need to soak your beans before you eat them. Like bananas, beans are hard and mean if you try to eat them before they're ready. But unlike bananas, you only need to soak them to make them good. You don't need to fart on them. In fact, beans will help you ripen bananas. I'll explain how in a bit. But first, a message from our sponsor, Smucker's Brand Goober Paste. Hey honey, what do you want to have for dinner tonight? Babe, I'd love some paste for food, baby. You know I love paste and slurries. Mmm, Smucker's Brand Goober Paste is here to save the day again and turn a normal hate-filled night into an erotic fantasy beyond even your most sick and twisted dreams. Thanks for the paste dinner, my husband. I'm full and I'm soaked. Smucker's Brand Goober Paste. It's good to eat for dinner with your spouse. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to eat lotion. I don't know if you know this, but lotion is super delicious and good. I eat a lot of it, and it makes me strong, and it lubes my innards so that I'm able to digest foods really quickly, and the turds come sliding out of me as soon as I finish eating. It's really convenient. I never need to worry about having to poop when I'm out and about, because I know that I will have to poop no more than 15 minutes after eating, thanks to my internal lubricant, thanks to my lubed tubes, thanks to the lotion that I eat. Luckily, you can often find lotion in the refrigerator, section of your local grocery mart. It's sold in cups or tubs or tubes that you can squeeze directly into your mouth. I like the kind in cups because I like to eat things with spoons. I like to shovel my food into my body and pretend that I'm a grave and the food is the dirt. And thanks to all the lotion I eat, that dirt comes screaming out of my rear end in record time. To eat lotion, just open wide and be sure to chew at least 30 chews before swallowing. Be safe. Don't choke on lotion. Don't become another statistic. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to cook pig. Pig meat is a great, high quality meat that grows on most pigs. To cook the meat of a pig, remove it from the animal's stinking corpse and cook it. Cook it however you like. If you were me, you'd boil it a little bit. If you weren't me, you'd probably be happy and satisfied and have friends and a family who love you and care about you. If you weren't me, you wouldn't wake up every morning covered in sweat and other unmentionable fluids. You know what? No. The other fluids aren't unmentionable, they're totally mentionable. The other fluids are pee and liquid poop because the pig meat that I boiled for dinner last night leaked out of my butthole while I was sleeping and I woke up in a puddle of it. If you weren't me, you wouldn't have to deal with that puddle, but I'm me so I do. So if you'll excuse me, I've got a towel I need to wring out. And yeah, I sleep on a towel. So what? Big whoop. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to cook pork. Pork is a gray meat that tastes like blood and paper or something. I don't know, I only cooked pork once and it didn't turn out well. Maybe it did turn out well, I don't have much of a frame of reference because like I said, I've only cooked it once. I've only cooked it once and I've only eaten it once. I only eat things that I cook myself unless they're the kind of foods that you can do raw like oats or hot dogs or corn. Those are the three raw foods. All the rest must be boiled or heated in some way. I usually do boiling. When I made pork, I boiled it up for nearly 40 seconds before it turned gray and edible. The innards, the inside part of the pork, was still nice and cool so it didn't burn my teeth while eating it. I have really, really sensitive teeth, so when I cook stuff, I tend to keep it on the rare side. My teeth can't handle hot meat, so if you want to be like me, just boil your pork for a few seconds. The inside should still be kind of see-through. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to cook ham. Mmm, ham. So good. So fun to eat. My favorite way to cook ham is the old-fashioned way that they do in the old country. I like to sun-dry it until the exterior part has become tough and rubbery. That's the best. That's the way they do it in the old country. To cook ham, just bring it with you to the beach and leave it in a chair or in the dirt. You can wipe off the dirt later, don't worry. Or you can leave the dirt on. I don't care. I don't care what you do with your ham as long as you cut it thin and make a sandwich with it. What do you put on your hand sandwich? What do you put on your ham sandwich? Well, Smucker's Brand Goober paste, of course. This tutorial is brought to you by Smucker's Brand Goober. The only paste. The only legal paste. This just in. All other pastes have been outlawed by the governor. Thank God. Thank Christ. There have been too many pastes for too long. Now there's only one. Smucker's Brand Goober paste sauce, berry blend, oil-based human food. The only legal paste. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to cook bacon. Bacon is a fat food made out of striped meat and fat. It's covered in salt and sort of tastes like hot dogs. My favorite way to cook bacon is to boil it, but I'm out of water right now, so I'll be showing you how to cook it in one of those pots that don't have big walls. What are those called? Short pots? Half pots? I don't know. If you don't have one of the whatever they're called, just don't cook bacon this way. Do it some other way. Put the bacon in a thing and warm it until it's cooked. What's that juice that comes out of it? 
when you cook it. The bacon water, what is that stuff? Is that stuff good? Can you water plants with that stuff? Can you collect enough of it to fill up a pot in which to boil bacon? I hope so. I also hope that someday they come up with a cure for whatever sickness I have that makes me have so many boogers. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to cook hog. Hog is just a fancy name for pig, which is just a fancy name for sow, which is just a four-legged animal shaped like an angry pill. Hogs love to scream. Thanks for tuning in for my presentation about the history of hogs, everybody. Hey everybody, thanks a whole lot. I hope you learned a little bit about hogs and had some fun along the way. Make sure to like and subscribe to everything. Anytime you can sub likes or subscribe to it, no matter what it is, you should do it. Turn on notifications as well. You should never go more than a few seconds without being notified. That's what I always say. So again, thanks everybody. Hogs. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to eat celery. Don't. Don't do it. Celery is bad. God, listen to that. It's not even food. It's a joke. It's the setup and the punchline and it's so funny I forgot to laugh. But you know what I didn't forget to do? Puke. Just thinking about celery makes me puke. Hey celery, fuck you. Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to make cookies. Cookies are a waste of time. The dough is the only thing that matters. To make cookies, don't make them all the way. Just make the dough and then eat it. It's not like I've got an oven anyway, and making them in a microwave is super hard, and I don't have one of those either, and making them over a fire is even harder than the microwave method. Anyway, cookie dough is totally fine to eat. Nothing bad ever happens to anybody who eats it. There are raw eggs in cookie dough that can kill you though, so keep that in mind. But if you think about it, every ingredient in cookie dough can kill you. Anything can kill you if there's enough of it. If you dropped 500 pounds of cookie dough ingredients on me, I'd die. It's as simple as that.